Will 10 gigabit ethernet work on some old Cat 5e? That's what I'm gonna try to figure out today. Many years ago, I wired my old house with some Cat 5e. The only way that I've utilized 10 gig so far is by using 10 gig DAC that uplinks from my gateway to my core switch. And this has worked out fine. But as I mentioned in my Home Lab Regrets video, I regretted not buying a PoE switch with more ports. For most, 24 ports are fine. But I have my whole house wired and lots of PoE cameras and Raspberry Pis, and not to mention a server rack. And I started to run out of ports really quick. I justified upgrading my switch to get more ports, not only for more PoE ports, but also for SFP Plus ports. So I decided to pick up the Switch Pro 48 PoE, and this thing is a beast, but a near silent beast. It has 40 PoE Plus ports and 8 PoE Plus Plus ports, so plenty of ports to connect and power all of my devices. And it also comes with four SFP Plus ports, which is perfect to uplink to my gateway as well as a few 10 gig devices. And that's when I started thinking, since I have a few extra SFP Plus ports, maybe I can connect my workstation to my servers. The problem is that I don't want to run fiber all the way from my office down to my server rack. This would be ideal, but the thought of climbing back into the attic and drilling a bunch of holes got me thinking. I wonder if Cat 5 e supports 10 gigabit. Well, I did what any normal person would do and I turned to the internet. And the answers are all over the place. They range from it works on up to 100 meters to it works on up to 45 meters to it might work on short runs, i.e. three meters, to why get that? Why do I even need it? So I decided to find out for myself. But before we go any further, I just want to give a huge thank you to our sponsor, MicroCenter, for making today's video possible. If you're thinking of building a new PC, you should look no further than MicroCenter. If you've never been to MicroCenter, you're missing out on seeing a huge selection of technology in person. They've got everything for custom PC builders from SSDs and hard drives, to power supplies, to memory, to air and water cooling, to motherboards, to video cards, to processors, and more. Micro Center is your one-stop shop to totally customize your next PC build. And don't worry, if it's your first time building a PC, they have lots of helpful and eligible staff that are there to help you out and will point you in the right direction. Micro Center's been generous enough to give a free SSD to all new customers and it's available in store only. So be sure to see the link in the description for details. So along with the switch, I picked up two Intel converged network server adapters, the X540T1 and two 10 gig SFP plus to 10 gigabit RJ45 modules. And you can find the links in the description below if you're interested. This will allow me to connect my workstation to my office over my existing crusty old Gap 5 e to my new Switch, and then to one of my servers to do some real testing. But first, I need to install the Switch. First, I had to disconnect most of the patch panels that connected to my old Switch. After those were disconnected, I made note of all of the ports, but I didn't do the greatest job. Then I took out my old Cisco switch that was there for storage, and now I'm going to store this switch in its place, and then attach the ears and rack mounted my switch. After this, it was time to connect all of those cables. I still love these slim ones. <laughs> that port's really bothering me. So I'll have to figure out what to do. Yeah, I'll figure that out later. So now I'll put in these RJ45. So this is SFP plus to RJ45 10 gig transceiver modules. I know what I can do since one of these is going to be connected to here. I can shift them all down one. So that'll partially satisfy my OCD. And I don't remember which one of these connects to it. So give me a second. All right, gonna cheat a little bit. So instead of figuring that out now, I'm just gonna patch it through directly to here and leave this as is. I'll tidy it up later. Um, but I do have Cat 5 e coming all the way into here. Once it gets to here, it's Cat 6. Um, but that doesn't really matter. I mean, the Cat 5e uh, is going to be obviously the slowest or the thinnest or <laughs> the oldest, I guess, piece. And it's only going to be as good as its weakest link. So I'm going to patch 
this server in directly to here. And then I'm gonna patch one of those from my office down directly into here and tidy that up later. Okay, I just got everything hooked up and it took a little bit longer than I expected. I ran into a small snag and it had nothing to do with the switch. It had everything to do with my labeling system, which wasn't the greatest. So now let's see if we can get 10 gigabit. So I opened up my network control panel and I can see right away that it's auto negotiated at one gigabit per second, which isn't necessarily a good sign, but who knows? Maybe 10 gig NICs negotiate that way? Not sure, <laughs> never connected to 10 gig NIC. But I'm able to get to the internet. I see packets transmitting and received. And if I look at my switch, I can see right here is my PC. And I can see that it's set to switching for the operation and auto negotiation, which it should be negotiating 10 gig, but it's obviously not right now. Uh, and this Jack 50 is my other server that I installed the 10 gig NIC in. It's set to auto negotiation too, but it's actually blue. So I think that means it's negotiating at 10 gig. But the interesting part is I don't see my machine actually connected to it because typically I'll see what device is connected to it. I don't see that here. I feel like I should go reboot that machine or something. This is not looking good so far. Let me go reboot that server really quick because I can't remote into it. So that's what I tried to do. I tried to remote into it. I tried to ping it and I can't ping it. So let me reboot that machine really quick. Let me make sure that this is set to auto negotiation. It is and switching. Actually, let me try something else. Let me actually first disable this port. Let's say it's disabled. So this should go dim here in a second. There it goes, went dim. So now let's set the port profile back to all. And let me actually set it to 10 gig this time. Apply. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna ping that machine. I saw it come on as gray and it's blue, but I don't have a connection. I have a feeling this is my mislabeling mishap again. I'll be right back. Let me go check it. Okay, so it looks like everything's okay. Maybe the IP address has changed. Let me look at that. Yeah, it's it's interesting because it says it's not connected. I'm gonna change this back to auto. Not a good sign, definitely not a good sign. Uh, while that's going, let's figure out what's going on with this PC right here. So let's go back to our NICs. And so again, I'm only connected at one gigabit. So my, oh, I don't know if I should change it on the switch and let my PC update or vice versa, change it on the PC and let my switch update. Either way, I'm gonna go offline. So let's change this to 10 gig on this side. So while I do that change, let's ping our gateway really quick. Set this to 10 gig, watch us probably go offline. We're not offline. There we go. Did see it change to blue up there, as you can see. So we're offline now. Hopefully now this switch auto negotiates to 10 gig. Okay, so let's check our network adapter. We're still connected at one gig. Uh, let's disable and enable it. Okay, so now it's enabled and not connected. Not good so far. So let's go into the properties and let's manually configure this until this not to negotiate automatically. Uh, 10 gig? Sure. 10 gig? That was interesting. It just disappeared and came back. Is this the one now? Oh, okay. So... <laughs> hey! 10 gig! Whoa! <laughs> oh, that was genuine reaction. I didn't think this was gonna work. Hey, we're at 10 gig. Whoa. The work's not over yet. <laughs> I didn't test this at all and it ran into all kinds of weird like little problems and I thought there's no way there's no way Okay, 10 gig. That is good Sorry <laughs> uh, I'm like all shaky now. I feel like the first time I ever networked something anyways, so 10 gig that is good That is good. Okay <laughs> What do we even do next? Speed test. I didn't plan ahead. I did kind of plan ahead. I knew we were going to run speed test, but now we need to run a speed test to see if I can get this 10 gig connection to actually work. But as you remember, the server is still offline, not connected. So we need to figure that one out. So 10 gig on the client machine, going through some crusty cat 5 e twist it up into my basement, twist it around all the way down to the basement, twist it up into the server room. And we got a 10 gig connection. But as you know, 10 gig doesn't mean I get 10 gigs of throughput. We'll test that here in a second. Okay, that is awesome. That is awesome. Okay, there's still hope. Okay, so what is up with this server then? One of my biggest gripes with UDM Pro is DHCP. Why is it gotta be so hard? So display options, show only wired, show all devices. 
who knows how many things you have to click. I don't care about all of this. I do care about that. We don't have any local DNS records. Last seen, we're gonna say in the last 24 hours. Hopefully, in this list, I will see my machine. So the interesting part is, is that it did have an IP address before. But I have a feeling this isn't, you know, this isn't a problem with the UI. Well, it is a problem with the UI. I just have a feeling that this machine is not on right now. I should have written down the MAC address and given it a static IP. That would have been pretty smart. This is where IPMI would really come into handy. This is actually my PC conversion machine and I don't have IPMI in it. I would love to have that at this point. That's the weird part. It is negotiating at 10 gig, but it's not getting an IP address. So I'm gonna have to hook a monitor and keyboard up to it really quick, BRB. <laughs> Okay, so I hooked up my 4K monitor down here temporarily uh, and to try to check to see what's going on with this, I plugged in the keyboard. I definitely need a KVM at some point. Uh, but if I do an IPA, I can see that this NIC doesn't have an IP address. But then if I do an LS PCI, I can see the NIC right there, Ethernet controller, Intel, Ethernet controller, 10 gigabit. So I'm not really sure what's going on. For some reason, this device is down, but I can't bring it back up. So I'm gonna continue troubleshooting. Okay, so it's rookie hour here. So I realized after installing this NIC that NetPlan didn't have uh, the required settings applied. So I obviously you use NetPlan if I'm using Ubuntu. And I had my first NIC set Ethernet's ENO1 uh, set to DHCP4, yes. Uh, well, the second NIC didn't have this applied. So the second NIC, this Intel NIC is ENP2S0. And I had to turn on DHCP for IPv4 and say yes. And as soon as I save this and apply this NetPlan, back out of here, and then apply an IPA, tiny screen. But you see right there, 192.168.0.104. So this means we're connected, I think, I hope, at 10 gig. Let's go check. Okay, so after figuring all of that out, <laughs> totally rookie hour, I'm able to connect at 10 gigabit per second on both ends, so this is pretty awesome. So I did some shuffling around when I was troubleshooting to make sure that it wasn't one of my SFP plus ports or one of my GBICs. Uh, so this one is still my machine, the one that I'm on right now. And this one is my Ubuntu server that I put uh, the 10 gig NIC in. That one's name is Proton. So we are connected at 10 gigabit. And so let's do a little test. First, let's do something, I guess, a little less scientific and just copy and paste a file. We'll check again, make sure we're connected at 10 gigabit, and we are. And that shows the same on the switch. And on the left side, I have this 41 gig file. And on the right side is the share on that Ubuntu server. You can see it, 192.168.0.104. So let's copy and paste. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, that was one gigabyte. I was like, one gigabit? That doesn't look good. One gigabyte per second. It's gonna drop down. So I know why it's dropping down and that's because of the drives. But let's check this machine out. So if we look at this machine, it is taking on some load, but we could see that our transfer speed is topping out close to 600, about five and a half, 550 megabytes per second. And I think that's due to the hard drives that are in this system. The hard drives that are in there are spinning rust. <laughs> I didn't have SSDs in that machine or have an array or ZFS to where I could push fast enough, but this is really fast. So what, 500 megabytes per second is roughly four gigabit? Uh, but it started out fast. So that tells me these cables can push 10 gigabit as long as the other side, the system that's writing can accept it. So let's try one more thing. Let's try iPerf. I don't get to use this enough, so let's try iPerf to test this out. So on the left side, I'm on my machine, this machine, using WSL on Windows. And on the right side, what you're looking at is me remoted into that machine. We can see from the IPA, we scroll around and look. There's our IP address. 
somewhere in there my eyes deceive me but that's the machine we can do host name two and see that it's named proton so let's clear that out now let's run an iperf iperf is just a network throughput test and it's a really simple command line utility that you can launch on one end you launch the server or the listener and on the other end you launch the client or the one that's going to send the traffic it's really easy to do. Let's do that. So first, we'll need to install iperf. We'll need to make sure it's installed on both sides. Then on the server side or on the remote side, let's launch iperf-s. And so now it's listening for incoming connections from another client. And so on the other side, on my machine, I'm going to run iperf-c and then the IP address of the remote machine. And now we can see we're connected. And you can see from this test that ran, it transferred 10 gigabytes and we were able to get 8.6 gigabits per second. Let's run this again just for fun because it's so awesome that this worked. Took a lot of work. Eight and a half gigabits per second. I'm cool with that. So there is no doubt in my mind that my machine should be able to handle up to 10 gigabits per second, along with my crusty old Cat 5e that's strung around through the attic all the way down to my server room. That's good news, because that means I don't have to climb in my attic and run some more cables and drill a whole bunch of holes in the walls. So if you have some old Cat 5 cable, I encourage you to give it a shot if you have a 10 gig switch. You can find GBIC adapters pretty inexpensive compared to running new cable throughout your house. And I'm gonna be putting this to the test soon with possibly a new storage server. So make sure you're subscribed to see how that turns out. So I hope you learned something today. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. So we're doing things a little bit different. We have Jeff from Craft Computing. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize we were live yet. So we have Jeff from Craft Computing. You guys know him. Uh, home lab extraordinaire, self-hoster extraordinaire. Craft uh, <laughs> uh, brewing extraordinaire. Craft uh, beer aficionado. Uh, all the things, all the things. <laughs> all around, well-rounded dude. <laughs> that's right, that's right.